And today's workshop, we're going to look at a little bit of information about digital literacy. That's a fairly massive topic uh, that we're not going to have um, the ability to cover really in an hour. Um, but we'll just do like a very brief overview, and then we'll look at some of the tools that we have um, available to us to implement some of these ideas in our own courses. So my name is Kevin Harris. I'm an instructional support coordinator uh, here at CIDL. Um, my position mostly uh, focuses on supporting faculty with the use of uh, the various technologies uh, that we offer here at the university to help you with instruction. Um, uh, the majority of my job typically focuses on Blackboard and Blackboard support, uh, but now that we've made that transition uh, from original to ultra, uh, we now have kind of capacity to expand. Uh, and we have recently um, licensed Adobe. Uh, we are now the second um, uh, university to be an Adobe Creative Campus in the state. Um, and all of you uh, and your students now have access to a wide range of Adobe products. Uh, and so we're going to focus some of our attention forward going forward um, on some of these other tools that are available to us. Uh, my email is on here, kevin.harris at niu.edu. Um, and that's uh, the phone number that links to my Teams account. Um, if you have questions about uh, any of this that we cover today or anything that we don't uh, have a chance to cover, or anything else related to uh, teaching and learning or, or uh, educational technology, feel free to reach out um, and we can set up a time to uh, meet. Like I said, today we'll do an overview of some, some of the tools um, that are available, but you may want to have a like a one-on-one -on -one consultation following up with um, after this, uh, and I'm happy to schedule that. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, um, I don't typically ask this, but I'm gonna ask this today. If you would, uh, come on camera and introduce yourself and um, either the courses that you teach or the department that you work in. Um, that would be really great, I think, in kind of helping us build community. Um, you know, you've elected to come here today and uh, others have as well. And these are put our potential, um, you know, people that can support you or, or maybe you can uh, connect offline outside of this uh, together and, and build some of these ideas together. So if you wouldn't mind, um, if you're able, if you're able to uh, turn on the camera and just give a brief introduction of, of your name and and what you do here at the university. Laura, I'm going to call on you. I saw you unmuted. <laughs> um, hi, I'm I'm Laura Vasquez. Uh, I teach in the Department of Communication. I know a, many of the Adobe higher level Adobe products, um, but I'm teaching an intro uh, to media studies course, and I'm looking for what I can do with these uh, sort of beginning and what I would call them entry level software. So, and how I can enhance that media studies course for these students. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, yeah, today we're going to look at Adobe Express specifically, which is uh, definitely the the entry level product that most students will be able to to jump right into um, using templates and other resources that are available to us. Um, Brenna, would you like to go next? Uh, hi, I'm Brenna. Uh, I'm actually a graduate assistant in the communication department, so I'm teaching the fundamentals of public speaking, but I'm also an assistant coach for our speech and debate team. Excellent. Uh, Tedra, the only one here that I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Tedra. I work in CIDL. Uh, more specifically, I'm the assistant director for our online student success programs. Um, so I'm just here to gain more knowledge how, of how we can embed digital literacy with our online students. Great. Thanks, Tedra. Kay, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Kay Gallio. I am a GTA at the English department. Currently, I'm teaching writing and composition for the first year students, undergraduate students. So I'm looking forward um, on like learning more about this program so that I can embed digital literacy, the use of Adobe in my writing and composition class. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. And I, and I know for um, a lot of the templates and lesson plans that are created, a lot of them have been geared towards English courses. And so there's a, a great number of resources that we can look at today. And uh, Yuan? 
Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yuan from Finance Department. Uh, I'm teaching financial information and uh, visualization and also uh, machine learning in finance. I want to learn more about Adobe Express to improve my digital uh, teaching. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, everyone. You're welcome to leave the cameras on, but if you'd like to turn them off now, uh, that's fine as well. It's up to you. Um, so uh, our objectives for the day is uh, we're going to try to develop a, we're not even going to develop, I'm sorry, I'm going to give you a definition of digital literacy. Um, this is something that we could spend more time on, but because we're using Adobe, we're going to use a definition that they provide. That's fairly in line with most other definitions that I found out there as well. Um, we're going to look to either develop or adopt an assignment um, that's designed to build digital, liter digital literacy in our courses. Uh, and uh, we're going to use various tools or be able to use various tools in Adobe Express. Initially, I had comfortably use various tools in Adobe Express. We may or may not get there today, but um, we'll at least have an understanding of, of what's available uh, and some idea of how to use it. Uh, and then the agenda. So we'll, we'll define digital literacy. Um, we're going to take a tour of uh, the products of Adobe Express. I'm going to make sure all of you can actually log in and um, access it. Uh, we had a few hiccups at the beginning. Um, they were rare, but um, if that happens, we have some some solutions to those. So I want to just make sure you can actually get in. Um, I'm going to show a, a, a number of the capabilities within Express, but I'm going to focus a little bit more heavily on web pages. A lot of the resources that they have um, created, uh, lesson plans and uh, samples and such, focus uh, geared towards higher ed. Focus on the web pages, uh, and so I'll show those. The nice thing about them is that you can build any of the other tools in Adobe Express, um, like using images or videos, for example, uh, or some of their AI capabilities, and then you can embed those in an Express page that you create. Um, I'm going to share some resources, um, mostly from Adobe, and then I'm going to turn it over to you to uh, kind of play around or, or work with the tools, um, and then I'll be here to provide any sort of support. Uh, we'll check in at the end. Um, on ways that you can access support uh, outside of this workshop. So according to Adobe, they have defined digital literacy as the ability to navigate, evaluate, and communicate uh, information online or in a digital format. Um, most other definitions, if you look this up, will be similar to this as well. Um, I, I uh, put in bold and underlined communicate because I think the tools of Adobe really kind of emphasize that aspect, um, navigating digital information, evaluating and analyzing some of that, um, maybe skills that we teach in our course. And there are certainly some tools uh, that are available within the Adobe suite that can help us um, with that process, like graphic organizers, for example. Um, but I think for to a large extent, the, the, the products can help us kind of communicate these, these findings. So, And uh, next up, we will actually log into Adobe. I'm going to post this link for you in the um, in the chat, and we're going to make sure we can get everybody signed in. So there's the link, and I'm going to open a window and walk through this process as well. I'm going to do this in, in incognito on my end just because I've I've logged in and already downloaded everything. Um, but this way, if you're following along, uh, you'll for the first time you'll see the same screens as this. So you'll land on this page here, uh, which is just the Adobe landing page, and then you can sign in up here in the upper right hand corner by clicking sign in. Uh, and you'll sign in with your uh, employee ID. And if it's a student, they would sign in with a student ID. And and you want to use the number, not your email. So my email is kevin.harris, but uh, my AID is A2010038. Uh, and so you'll use that at mail.niu.edu. And then continue. From here, it's going to take me to the single sign-on page. Uh, that should be familiar. And I have to try to remember my password. OK. 
Okay, and then now I'm in. So I'm in this page here, uh, and this is where I can access um, the Adobe tools that are available to us. And I'm going to wait just a minute just to make sure everybody has a chance to get here. Uh, if you can't, if this doesn't load for you, uh, you can unmute or throw it in the chat, and we can problem solve with you. I'll just ask the question, Kevin, um, with us logging in with our regular um, email, same thing for students using that ZID, um, what password are they using? Is it like the, are they resetting a new password or is it like the password they use for like their my NIU and whatnot? Yeah, it's everything that's attached to their NIU account. So it's, it's just one password that you would use for Blackboard or for your email. It's all the same. Thank yep. you. Yeah, no, great question. All right, so once we get here, uh, you'll see some of you may have uh, your apps right here that I'll have some of the apps. We're going to focus today on Express. Um, if this doesn't show up, you can click up here uh, next to um, the little icon image. Uh, I don't know what you call this thing. It's like the um, it's like a square with made up of tiny squares. If you click that, um, then you'll be able to access Express from there. Or you can go over here to Apps in the left toolbar. And uh, you'll see some of the products that we have access to. Um, so we have Photoshop uh, and we have Audition and we have Lightroom and Illustrator and um, you know, the, the vast majority of, we have Premiere Pro, uh, Acrobat, like a, Acrobat Pro, which, which provides more capabilities than just a standard one. Um, some of these are, are quite advanced and they may require an entire course for students to be able to actually develop the skills to use them well. Uh, we're going to focus today on Express, which is, again, really easy to jump in uh, and click and go without having to know how to really do anything. A lot of your students may have experience using um, either Express or similar products uh, like Canva. I know a lot of high schools use Canva for, for projects, and so it's going to it's going to function uh, similarly, very similarly. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click Express. You can also download these onto your computer, and so you don't have to go to the um, web browser every time. So once we get into uh, Express, this is what the landing page looks like, uh, and we have some options here. Um, once you have stuff saved, you can go here and access it, but we're currently in the Home tab. It's going to give suggestions um, on types of things that you could uh, create using Express. So these are, and I don't know if yours will all look like these uh, or if these are just catered based on things that I've already done in Express, um, but you can click through these tabs and find different um, uh, kind of projects that you could potentially work on. Here, these are, are curated, I guess, for me. You could click on video and uh, with video tools, you have the ability to create videos, trim videos, edit, merge them, uh, convert file types. There is a um, text to animation feature that's kind of interesting that some students might like or that might work for some of your assignments, um, where essentially you just re you, you kind of pick a character, you can pick a background, you can customize it, and then you record audio, and then those characters carry out the audio. Um, you can, like I said, you can merge video clips and build out video, and then there's a ton of templates that you can use. Um, with that process. It's very similar with photos. Um, you can remove remove backgrounds, convert file types, resize, crop, um, build collages, build different photo displays, uh, and so on. There's also um, AI generated photos, and that's something that they push. You can see that here where it's uh, generative AI. You can type in a prompt um, for what it creates. You can There's all these different parameters that you can select, uh, and it can generate a variety of images for you. Just like all other AI, it can be a little bit tricky at times, um, but it, it's a fun tool, I think. Um, for me, it's a tool that's easy to get lost in and focus more on the tool as opposed to the outcome that I want. So um, I'm going to steer clear of it for uh, for this session. Um, but you could, you know, any of these features can be used um, and then kind of combined with other features. So you could create images and then incorporate them in videos, or you could create images and videos and incorporate them 
into uh, web pages or portfolios and uh, and it's really easy all of your files are saved and they're very easy to kind of import into other projects um, with documents so uh, you may want to have students do online annotations that's something you can do here you can edit PDFs um, which can be tricky uh, if you don't have the more advanced tools um, convert to PDF and then there's a variety of like document types that you can create yeah you can create uh, posters and flyers and infographics. Um, you can create presentations um, very similar to a PowerPoint, uh, but with a kind of a new set of templates that are available. Um, so the the, the capabilities, uh, it, it's pretty robust what can be done here. Um, and in fact, to the point that it might be a little tricky to find exactly, <laughs> exactly what you want. Um, I'm going to uh, show web pages because uh, like I said, a lot of the resources that they provide um, have students making a web page. Uh, and really, that can be anything that you want. It can be, um, a, it may be like a portfolio of work, but it also might be, uh, you know, some analysis that students um, complete and they just kind of create a, a web page to display that and present that. Uh, or it could be, um, you know, any sort of project that they're working on. Let's say your students are writing a, a a research paper and they could be documenting different steps of the research process you know from um you know their annotated bibliography and source evaluation and critique and um you know developing their thesis and all of those components can be built into um, the web page where they can kind of use that as a demonstration of learning um how you start to create things if you don't find it out here where you want if you, if you do you just click plus and go um, but if you click this plus sign up here then you can um, you know kind of find the item type that you would like and i'm going to like i said for the for this presentation uh, show web pages so if you go in uh, to web page there's a ton of templates that you can start with i advise uh, i would advise that the first time or the first couple of times that you're working with this to use a template um, just because it's so easy you don't have to you could start from scratch and build it out yourself um, but for this i'm going to choose a template and I'm going to use this one here and I'm going to click select. It'll take a few minutes to load, uh, but it shouldn't take long. Typically, it doesn't take this long. It seems like I'm having a little bit of a lag. But while it's loading, you'll see that there are these themes over here on the left um, that have, have been like pre-populated. So you can choose these, which will change um, you know, the fonts, and it might change some elements within, um, within this page as well. Um, so let's pick this one. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to close this. Uh, and you can come back to that by clicking up here uh, on this little themes tab. Um, you can preview your work by clicking this preview button. And you could also use this present mode to kind of work through uh, what it will look like when others are viewing it. Um, but when you're working on it, if you want to change something, you just click on it. So let's say I don't like this background image here. If I just click on it, I can now click this replace button. I can use, uh, this will link to Adobe Stock Images, which we have licensed as well, uh, which includes thousands and thousands of images that you could choose. Uh, this is kind of school themed, so I'm just gonna type in school. And I'm gonna go with this backpack image instead. Uh, and then it just swaps it out really easy. They can, if they if students have created images, they could put those here. If they have, um, you know, if they're doing some Let's say they're doing a research project and, and there's some like historical images that go along with that. They could incorporate those. Um, and then you have some some design uh, changes that you can make. It's not super robust. There, there's not a whole lot of uh, variety that they can do, but there are, you know, they can they can change the layout, they can change the display to some degree. If they want to change the text, they could just click on it. 
and type. Uh, and then they just scroll down to the next part. And then essentially it's gonna work a little bit like Blackboard in that there are these plus signs that will appear. And you can click these to add different elements. And so you can add photos, text, you can add buttons, which uh, is like essentially you can hyperlink to a website or you can have a document that will open, uh, which is really nice for uh, portfolios. Um, you can link videos, different varieties of slides, and you can, um, you know, kind of change the layout to be it's either it's either a full screen layout or a split screen, which usually has an image or a video on one side and some text on the other. And you can swap those up. Uh, and then if you click your stuff, you can actually grab something that you've already created and pull that in. So maybe you start the year where they're creating an image of something and then they've created a video later and then they've written some sort of analysis. They could then pull all of that into um, this tool, you know, at the end of the semester. Um, same thing, there's some text editing features here that you could use to change the font type. Um, you know, you can change the alignment and so on. Um, the same before with the images. If I just click on this image here, I can replace it. I can also change the focal point uh, of, of the image, and then you can adjust here. And then if I go into settings, I can also add um, alt text here. So you can make your sites uh, more accessible by adding um, you know, alt text. It's going to, for the Adobe stock images, most of them I believe have uh, alt text included, but you could check that, or you can mark your images as decorative. Um, and then again, you can add elements. So let's say I wanted to put a button in here. Uh, and then in this button, I'm just going to put. Um, and so then if students click on, or if the user clicks on this button, it'll take them to Google. But you could, you know, like I said, you can have, um, let's say you had a, a shared document uh, that, that students wanted the instructor to see. Uh, and that could, they could then just like hyperlink those in here. Uh, and it, uh, you know, it will, it will take you to that when you're using it. Um, and then there's, you know, a wide variety of, of images and different textiles that you can use to kind of build these out uh, and, you know, make it fit your course. So um, I, really the goal with, it, with this was just to show you how easy it is to use and how quick it can be to set up. And then you can just click these boxes and, um, split the layout, and then you can add an image. This is what it'll look like if you're creating it from scratch. Uh, you can find your own image, you can add your text, and so on and go from there. Um, now I'm gonna show you a few examples of projects that were created um, by students and that um, are included in some of the uh, lesson plans that have been provided by Adobe. So let me... I'm gonna share this link with you as well. Um, there are two sets of tools that are really useful here. Um, one is the teaching resources. Uh, this is part of the Adobe Education Exchange. Um, and this will provide you with a number of lesson plans, uh, which you can search. Um, so let me... Yeah. I'm gonna put this, this will take you directly to the lesson plans. Um, you can then kind of focus your search. So I'm gonna leave it on teaching resources. Uh, I'm gonna select secondary and higher ed. Um, the, the higher, like I said, the higher ed resources, most of them that, are, <laughs> the examples that they give you are the web pages. Um, don't be afraid of using secondary just because it says secondary. It's certainly something that you could look at and then adopt to fit um, your course. You can. You can narrow it down by uh, discipline if you like as well, um, or you can leave it open. And then, you know, like I said, almost everything that you do in one discipline, you could adopt to fit in another one. And then here, um, you can narrow it down by the product. Since we're only going to use Express, I'm going to get rid of these other ones. And then I want ones that include templates. You may not, uh, and so you could click show all. Um, but the templates are nice because if you want to, you know, if you're look, just looking for something kind of quick to, to set up and test out, the templates there, students can then use and modify that template without having to start from scratch. Uh, I think one thing you'll find, if you, especially if you 
if you're if you're switching or, or adjusting from a very traditional standpoint where students may sit and take tests or write traditional papers, and then you ask them to do something that requires a little bit more kind of creativity or something out of their comfort zone, uh, you, I think you'll find that some students will panic. At least I did when I was uh, a teacher. I spent 11 years teaching high school, and anytime I would give something that was a little bit more open-ended, there's going to be a number of students who really are looking for uh, some structure and direction. And so um, these templates might help you provide that. You can narrow it down by the length of the prod, um, at least the estimated length uh, of this type of assignment as well. And then you can kind of dig through and find them. I have selected a few uh, that I thought were interesting. And so I will show those. Um, this one was a video reflecting on artistic movements. Uh, and when you land here, it's going to give you uh, the ability to view an edit, uh, a template that you could share with your students and they can edit. Uh, and then they typically have a lesson plan. Now, there's not, there, there's a fairly consistent model in most of them on what the lesson plan looks like, but this one it was built uh, in collaboration with Khan Academy and it looks a little different. Um, but essentially, there's uh, student samples. Uh, and this one has a whole directions. You know, you're going to watch these videos, and then you're going to create a video, kind of responding to uh, those videos. And I will show the sample because I think it is fairly decent. Typically, these load significantly faster than what I'm having today. I don't know if it's because I'm streaming them through Teams. I have kind of a lot of things going on at once. Okay, so I'll stop it there. But this is an assignment that would have typically been or could have typically been, you know, written response um, that they've kind of expanded on uh, and encouraged um, kind of a little bit more cre creativity in the presentation. Uh, something that I found in my teaching and that you may find as well is that if you're asking students to make something that other people are going to look at, um, oftentimes there's a little bit more attention placed on that ass assignment, uh, especially if they know peers are going to see it, for example. Um, and this might be an example where you might uh, find students that may struggle a little bit more with the writing aspects and might get hung up a little bit on the writing, but really do have great ideas. And this might provide them an alternative to present those ideas. Uh, yeah, Laura, go ahead. Yeah, is there a way to add audio to this? There is, yeah. So when you create these videos, you can add, you can record your own audio. And then there's audio clips like like that they that he's embedded in here. Uh, did could you hear his his no, speaking? No, I, I couldn't hear oh, it. So well, that I'm definitely sorry. doesn't help, does it? <laughs> no, that's great to know. Um, because I, I have my students do these kinds of exercises, but they're using tools like CapCut and whatever they can get their hands on. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can put them in an Adobe Premiere Lab, but that's a huge step to, yeah. to start off with. Yeah, no, they and they can do this right in. I don't know how to make Teams stream the sound. Um, okay, I, I'll stop just right now without spending some time figuring it out. But I, I posted okay. this this one in here. Um, but yeah, with with Express, they can they can uh, add audio components in. So it can. There's like a a lot of different little soundtrack clips that they can pull from, and then they can record their own audio in there as well. Thank you. Uh, mm hmm. So let's see. And then uh, just to go back to this one really fast. I think it has a rubric as well. Typically, they'll include some type of. Um, this one might not have one. This one doesn't. Some of them have like a little rubric. Typically, it's not a very thorough rubric, um, but it might give you some idea or, or it could be used as like a student reflection piece as well. And then this one also has um, this resource, and I'm going to toss this resource in the text box as well, where you can look at um, you know, ideas that, that may relate to um, your discipline or the types of assignments that you might want to give. And 
I'll have to find. Uh, okay, so it's not going to load. I will. I'll send this out with the. Um, try it one more time. I'll send this out with a follow up email. Um, this resource here, which I think is quite useful. Um, some of them can be this simple, where there's a template um, that's been created, and, and you may be asking students to uh, look at setting and theme and pull quotes uh, and just present ideas. Do they have a, students automatically have access? So. Are you, Ted, are you talking about to Adobe in general or to the templates? To um, the creative suite, do they automatically have access to everything? They do. Yep. Okay. So once they once they log in, they'll have access to the same as we did when we logged in. Nice. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, here's one where you might create a portfolio to analyze a credible source. Um, and this is more what the typical lesson plans uh, that they provide look like. Um, the, uh, this one here links to Shag Stanford History Education Groups, which I think they've rebranded. I don't think they go by that anymore. Uh, they have this, they have great resources for history teachers, but they also have um, the Civic Online Reasoning um, site where you can go and pull all types of information um, and resources that can help students with kind of analyzing and navigating digital media. And then, um, so there's typically a sample so we'll show the sample. And again, they this is just a, a website that they would have created. And then I gotta go back. And then there's a rubric as well, which I clicked. Okay, so this is the type of rubric that they laid out on this. They, every one of them is, is slightly different. So uh, some elements that you might look at and consider in a rubric. Again, you're gonna have your own course. You're probably gonna generate your own rubric on how you want to assess uh, the students, but these might be some ideas that you pull from. Um, present a web page analyzing a podcast credibility. Um, it feels quite relevant at the moment. This is a website. Um, I can't remember what I can't remember the prompt for this one. Um, but just to give you an idea of what they could potentially look like. To work around the uh, share screen. So like I said, a lot of these are um, that, that if you do a higher ed search, they're going to give you a website uh, essentially to create some sort of like portfolio or presentation. Um, and then like here's a, creating a graphic. And again, there's a lesson plan built in with, with samples um, and resources. Another one, if you, if you wanted students to just present some form of knowledge. And then this one was a video. So um, again, a wide range of these are available. Uh, there's some other places that you might consider looking uh, if you're a part of a professional organization. So as a, I taught high school history and economics, I was part of the National Council for Social Studies um, and they had a ton of resources available um, to pull information in uh, or just other teaching groups that you're a part of. Uh, you can find a lot, of, you don't have to create most of this from scratch. Um, so there, there are resources available uh, that you could use. So let me, Get out of here. Um, still creating. And then once you're once students are working on this, so this is the one we were working on at the beginning, um, they can preview it and they can see what it's going to look like. And then they can also share. And this is uh, a really nice feature. So they can publish to web. They can invite collaborators as well. So if you're if this is like a group project that students are working on, they can work on this um, together. Um, and then we're going to click publish to web and create link. I have it open in two screens, but typically it'll create um, a link there and then you can um, just really copy and they could copy and paste that link into uh, you know, an assignment submission in Blackboard and then 
you would have access to it. Or if you wanted everyone to view everyone else's, you could essentially create like a discussion in Blackboard and then students could post their link at the discussion and then they could go in and you know view the work of their peers and provide feedback and so on that way. Uh, yeah, Laura, go ahead. I have two questions. Um, students then can access this from their home computers. Is that right? That is correct. So it's my understanding, and this may be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that it's not. They can have um, these products on two computers, um, and but they can only be working on one computer at a time. So for example, if I had this on my home computer and my work computer, and I'm at work using it, like my wife can't be at home <laughs> using my tools on our home computer. So, um, but yeah, they can they can take it anywhere they want. Okay, and I have another question. So where are there? Where do these files reside? Yeah, so these are being these specifically are being stored in the cloud, um, and that's okay. that's we have storage space as part of our our license. Um, they can download them though, uh, and they could they could download the file onto their hard drive or onto a flash drive and have it backed up there as well. Or they they don't have to be on the OneDrive, is what you're saying. It doesn't have to be. They could if they wanted to. They could they could uh, download it to their OneDrive as well. But no, it doesn't have to be on the OneDrive. Okay, so it could either be in the Adobe Cloud. They'll host this for a given period of time. For how long? That's a great question, and I I don't know. I don't want to say indefinitely, but uh, <laughs> I don't know of any time that they take it away. <laughs> so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's something I can look into. And so I shared this. I'm going to share these resources as well. Um, Virginia Tech has a nice toolkit um, on 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 digital literacy and incorporating digital literacy in the courses. I'll include this again in the follow up email. Uh, and then there was an article by Educause that I thought had some useful tips. Um, and then, as I said before. Uh, you know, your professional organizations, your colleagues, uh, peers, and so on may have suggestions um, that could be helpful. So I think for the last 20 minutes that we have, uh, the best thing to do is just jump in uh, and find a tool or an idea and use the time to work on it. And then you can share out or we can troubleshoot. Um, or if you find some, some bumps that you can't figure out, we can solve them while we're here. Um, and that's what for the most part, that's what our students are going to do. Um, I feel like oftentimes when I was teaching, they were more courageous than I was about trying things out. Um, so what I would think to do is, you know, think of an assignment that you currently give, maybe in a traditional format, uh, and think about ways that you might kind of convert that to be, uh, to have more of a, a focus on, on digital literacy or, or you know, altering the way that they may communicate that, that assignment. Uh, and see if you can come up with a, a plan for that or find one of those templates and see if there's a way that you can incorporate one of those into an idea that would work for your course. Laura, go ahead. I'm I'm sorry. I don't mean to no, ask no. too many questions. No, please, uh, please. I, I appreciate what it. What about uh, the use of copyrighted information? I've been playing with Adobe Firefly, which I'd like to set up a separate appointment to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. But what about the use of material that is copyrighted? Um, for example, if I wanted them to uh, critique um, uh, some some part of a Hollywood movie, can they put <sighs> that in? Could they like could they put like a, a shot of the film in while or they're a critiquing clip it or whatever they can? get their hands on they're pretty good at thieving so I guess <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> that's a great question that i don't off the top of my head know the answer to um okay. i don't want to give you an answer and give you the wrong answer on this one so okay um let, let me get back to you on that one the like anything else like they should include citations um in in, in the work and anything they're referencing or, or borrowing from they should they should cite um but as far as, yeah, let me let me get back to you on the video stuff because that, that's outside of my area, and so um, okay. I, I want to give you a, a, a clear answer on that, and not what I think that turns out to maybe not be true. <laughs> so. Okay. I know typically in education, we have a little bit more flexibility in 
or use of some resources, but with films and such, I don't know, that seems tricky to me, so. Well, I don't know if fair use applies. I don't know if fair use applies in this okay, case. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I use fair use as a documentary filmmaker. So is, is, does fair use apply in this kind of an educational setting, which I believe it would. Um, but I really wouldn't, I wouldn't want Adobe to shut down the use because students were using something that was copyrighted and then it's got a big X across it or whatever. Yes. So. And and I do know that there are there are have been instances where Things had been licensed uh, in mm -hmm. Adobe, and then they stopped licensing, stopped licensing them. Um, I don't know why that was so hard to get out. Um, and then it got tricky to download. So we had a colleague here who created a presentation, and there was the tiniest little like icon that had had a license at one point, and then Adobe removed the license, and then she couldn't download it. And then it took us days to figure out like what specific element it was. Um, so yeah, let, let me look into that, and I will I will get back to you on this one. Uh, and then while you're working on these uh, or, or just kind of messing around with it, um, I'm going to provide some tips that I would consider. Um, one, uh, getting started, especially if you're if you if you teach a very traditional course and you're wanting to 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 change things, um, you know, think of an assignment that you already teach. Like you don't have to reinvent everything, um, and just think of some small way that you might transition that from something maybe paper based to something digital or something. Uh, maybe like a traditional writing thing to some sort of like video product that could be done fairly quickly. Um, and then co going along with that, start small and low stakes. Um, and, and by that, I mean, start the first few times that you may do things like this with students, if you haven't in the past. Um, probably don't go all in on things that are going to take weeks and weeks to develop. Uh, maybe something that may take a few minutes and that's very low stakes. So like kind of setting them up like it's OK to fail at this a few times before we actually get into uh, really the meaningful kind of uh, product that we want. Um, I think just using these templates and resources that are there, um, they're a great starting point. Uh, many of them can just be kind of modified and adjusted to fit something that you may already be doing. At least at the beginning and in early stages, uh, focus on process over product. I think it's really easy as educators to get caught up in I spent all this time on this and these products don't look that great. But like, what was the learning process for students as they work through this? Um, are they demonstrating learning, uh, you know, kind of from the beginning throughout? Uh, and sometimes that might be more important than the ultimate. Maybe the video quality was like, you know, lower at the end than we'd hoped for. But we're not teaching a video production course. You know, maybe we're teaching a, a modern world history course. And so, um, you know, just keep the focus where it should be on, on the learning and then, um, you know, kind of build in that product as we go. Be flexible uh, with students uh, and with yourself um, and patient. There are bumps. They do happen. Uh, we want everything to work smoothly and consistently every time, but periodically something comes up and it, and it doesn't uh, work. So, so be flexible with this. And I think that starting small and low stakes can kind of remove some of that stress that may be there um, and, and kind of help problem solve little things that uh, you may not expect. Um, like I said, search for examples that are out there. And lastly, ask for help. We're here. Um, CIDL has full-time staff. Uh, we're here every day. You can come in in person. You can email us. We can schedule meetings um, online through Teams. Uh, we can come to your office. It's really up to you. Um, but utilize the resource uh, resources that, that we have here. Um, yeah, so those are my tips. And I wanted to share one more thing. I had this problem as a teacher as well. I would ask students to do something and then I would talk over it the whole time and they had a hard time focusing. Uh, let's see, where did I put that? Um, here in this Adobe uh, Education Exchange where we looked at these templates, there's also this professional learning tab. Um, and these are mostly self-paced little training sessions most of them are around two hours um and that's if you're like really thorough on them you can do them more quickly to learn you know kind of ins and outs or even just like kind of the basics of a lot of the tools that they have available um and oftentimes when you're doing them they have you um they all have like a 
there's these discipline specific courses that you can look at too. But they, they'll have little projects that you work on um, throughout that little training that you can then take those projects and apply them to your classes as well. So a lot of great resources here. And then, um, you know, don't shy away from YouTube. The nice thing about Adobe is that uh, it's very widely used and there are a ton of training resources and tutorial videos that are really quick and short and uh, clear on YouTube that you can just grab and pull um, and use. And if you call me about a product project that I don't know how to fix, that's probably how I'm going <laughs> to solve it. So, um, you know, just find the resources that are there and, and use them as they as they fit you. And just really quickly, because I'm going to stop the recording, but you're all welcome to stay here uh, and continue to, to explore. Um, here's a, uh, just some access to the resources that we have here at CIDL. Um, if you want to set up a consultation, you could always email me directly at kevin.harris at niu.edu, or you could email us uh, CITL, C-I-T-L, at niu.edu, um, or you can go to our website, niu.edu slash CITL, and there you can you know, explore the resources that we have available um, and also schedule consultations that way as well. Um, thank you for attending, and I'm going to stop the recording.